Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, whatever time it is where you are. Uh, welcome back to another video of mine on RF and microwave devices. Uh, we talked last time about the uh, design of a uh, of a uh, of this micro strip to waveguide um, design. Uh, where the design was basically a probe uh, and a 50 ohm line, and then in between a section of an inductive section that cancels the uh, parasitic capacitance of the uh, interface at the step here. Uh, this is well uh, founded in, in books, you can refer to it. And, and, and so the design is parameterized in such a way that it's giving all these dimensions and uh, the design basically is pretty simple. Um, you design a 50 ohm line, you put it in a substrate. In this case, the substrate is a Rogers Duroid 5880. Uh, and then of course you build the waveguide on top of that and put in a, uh, a, uh, a variable length and width probe uh, uh, at a distance in which it is basically from the center of the probe to the back end, short, short end of the waveguide is a quarter wavelength. Because obviously you want the, the back end, the shorted back end, um, as you can see here, we are exciting this from this point here. So we want the short, the, the shorted back end in here looks like open from this point on loading, which is can only be done, as you know, by a quarter wavelength transformer, which, uh, of course, the quarter wavelength, not airspace wavelength, but the uh, waveguide wavelength. And of course, we, um, we went through this design, and you can sweep and optimize this design, um, because it's all parametrically um, set. The, um, as, as, as we showed last time, the, this probe was designed for somewhere around 27 gigahertz. The, um, the, um, we verified last time the, uh, the E field, basically distribution from this point excited on to that point or the other way around. We did both as if it was used in LMB or in uh, a, uh, uh, a transmitter, um, a block up converter transmitter or low noise block uh, down converter. And we showed that we could um, animate this and show you how the, uh, basically the TE10 mode gets um, uh, transferred and made into a quasi TEM mode on a microstrip line. And so you can see this as, how it's happening. Now, usually uh, this section in here, basically this board in here, usually it's a board that goes on to um, something else, which is usually is a, in the case of an LMB, for instance, is basically, um, um, there is a, 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 a complete board in here that, that takes the KU or KA band for SATCOM and, and puts it back, uh, brings it down to an IF, which is appropriate for the uh, for the receiver at, uh, that is usually centered at 1.5 gigahertz. Um, so uh, what we're gonna do today is show how we can utilize this into the following. Um, I'm sorry, this one here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna do uh, replicate the same probe on the other side. And now in this one in here, we can show that, of course, the um, that we swept this and had showed the uh, frequency response. And you can see it's a three dB splitter. So there is a 0.2 dB loss in this one. And uh, what we're gonna utilize this for is building either a, a dual channel LMB for redundancy, or uh, we're gonna use it for a buck, as a buck combiner, which is a power amplifier, uh, uh, a dual amplifier combiner, okay? So 
going back to this. Now, to see, to observe how the E field on this one is done, uh, uh, I have already did the computation, and this is basically what, what the way it behaves right now. So let's uh, animate this and show how this acts as a splitter. Okay, so you can see that we're exciting on this end. This is the short end in here, which is a quarter wavelength distance from the center of the conductors. And you can see the E field is on both sides. Now, this is in the case of a splitter, but now for a spatial um, splitter that could be used in a spatial um, designed amplifier, okay? Or some other uh, devices and tools. So let's see how we can also demonstrate how we can use this as a, uh, uh, um, as a combiner. And in that case, of course, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go here and uh, so we're gonna go to the fields and we're gonna do edit sources. And what we're gonna do, we're gonna change this to zero right now and do one here, one here, but we're gonna offset this by 180 degrees. And I'll show you in a minute why we're doing that, okay? And then of course, again, rerun this. So now it's the other way around. As you can see, the signal comes in here and comes from here and then goes that way, okay? So it gets combined. And this is what, what would happen in a spatially uh, combined, uh, spatially uh, designed amplifier where you, you need both. You need the splitter on one side and the um, combiner on the other side. The reason we uh, need to do the... Um, the um, the 180 degrees, as I will show in a minute, and this is of course shown on in a block diagram that I will show you in a moment. This is basically what 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 would be done is we would split a signal. One is 180 degree, and then go into a combiner. Okay, and that is done here, of course, with a hybrid 180 degree hybrid. Uh, so the reason we do this is because, as you can see in here, now this is a, a waveguide suction, okay? As you can see, the E field, from the E field symmetry, from this point to this point, it's a half wavelength. So the middle is where we put the probe. We put the probe right here to pick up the E field where it's maximum. This is the maximum. This red is the maximum magnitude for the E field. But now if you look at the vector, the E field vector, you can see that the E field vector in this way, it's pointing this way. And in that way, you're pointing the other way. So what that says is that if you were to feed the signal and coherently combine it, you would need to put, uh, excite uh, this probe in here. That first one would have to be uh, excited with 180 degrees. Uh, I'm gonna come back to this in a minute. This one here is excited with 180 degrees out of this one here. So now, because this was gonna be used in a, a, in a spatially combined amplifier, so what we're gonna do is put back to back both of them. So to test a splitter and a combiner both before we even put the, um, the GAN fit stages in there. And uh, that can be done in this in here. And what I did here, the beauty of HFSS, of course, all we do is cut and paste. So uh, you do the command duplicate. When you come here and here, you can click on all of this probe design and duplicate it 180 degrees offset and you end up with this. Once you verify it works, now we can go ahead and duplicate this whole thing on the other side and end up with this uh, with this network. And then you interconnect it with a microstrip line uh, with a um, chambered um, uh, corner, of course, as you know, this is well founded in the... Uh... So let's look at this here. I would expect that this here um, has a maximum loss of 0.2 dB as, as we, can, we have seen because we have 0.1 dB each way. So let me just make sure. 
Oh, no, I'm looking at the wrong results. Sorry. Let's uh, go some of these. Okay, so we are here. We are here. So what we're gonna we're gonna look at the results of this, which are this here. And of course, you can see that the loss is 0.2 dB within the band of operation. Um, to visualize the E field. Uh, so this is basically what happens is that in one of the waveguides on this one here, the signal gets split and then recombines in this one with, a, of course you would, uh, in our case, you would um, basically, um, you would, your amplifier would go in here basically on each side, okay? And um, providing that you have made 180 degrees um, phase shift in there. So just to visualize this one, the E field, we're gonna animate this. And there we go. So you can see that the E field comes in it's split on each side. So let's look at it from top. Okay, so the speed field comes, the signal comes in here, gets split, goes into this, becomes from, gets transitioned from a waveguide onto a planar microstrip. And the same thing on this side, and then comes back and recombines and goes again into the T, it's transformed into a TEM mode. Okay, so. That's what we have, uh, what I have. So again, now uh, this here, basically, this is where you would take this next and space these apart so that uh, your your amplifier comes in and puts in here. Of course, you add your all your um, uh, all of your. Um, um, bias and control circuitry for the GAN devices or gas devices, whatever it happens to be in this case. Now, I was talking about a power up power, but in case spatially combining, but uh, you, the same thing can be done with NLNA as well. Now, just to uh, give you some, um, just to give, so what I'm going to be next is showing a bunch of presentations, same as this video on a bunch of stuff. I'm gonna cover OMT's uh, uh, radial combiner and splitters and, and then go through some a bunch of uh, uh, filters, 3D filters, and everything is gonna be designed with um, HA ANSYS HFSS. So today we have covered the, uh, as I said, the, um, the uh, transition from microstrip to waveguide and uh, let me just hide the E field so that we don't. Okay, so this design in here. Okay, and just to give you a theoretical background, basically, uh, if you were to look at this as a uh, as as a device that is coaxial, the waveguide uh, um, interface, we come in with a probe that is a quarter wavelength at a quarter wavelength from the shorted back, and we insert that in there, and then. That would be, of course, this anywhere. It doesn't have to be a quarter wave. It's multiples of quarter waves. So it could be mechanically here or here or here, as long as you know along the the length of the waveguide where that E field maximum point is. Okay. Now this is um, this is coaxial, and of course coaxial. We're not interested in that. We're more interested into uh, printed. Um, circuit board technology interface to wave guys. And that is the case, for instance, in this, these are uh, available pictures from the internet of products. So you can see in here, in here where the, uh, this point here is, is this is where a pen is inserted, a metallic pen inserted onto a waveguide that is behind the LMB. And we can see into the, the three stages of LNA, low noise amplifiers. And this is, this happens to be a KU band SATCOM um, uh, low noise uh, block uh, LMB, okay? And just to show you a couple of pictures of these, how they're designed, here's one where mechanically is supported with some clear uh, board areas, same way you go directly onto the, uh, 
Um, no, no, is up for same way in here. Um, so, and here is a case where you have both vertical and horizontal, and it's exactly the same design. Uh, in this case, of course, the feed is a circle waveguide that is with the horn, and that's that comes in uh, from the back. And so, and there's a, a little on the cover in here. There's a short quarter wave length short that that comes in and touches this. Again, here's another one. There's a whole variety of these. Here's one in here. Okay. Um, dual, uh, vertical and horizontal, uh, horizontal, as you can see in here. Um, here's one in here that you can see clearly how it's interfaced to um, a rectangle waveguide. So the opening in here, that's another thing, by the way, that I forgot to mention. The opening in the uh, metal wall of the waveguide so that you can access the out of point uh, out of signal to the probe this also has to be designed carefully because you don't want to excite modes because this is literally another waveguide that can excite higher order modes so basically you want to make sure that this opening in here okay is designed well and make sure that it doesn't support higher order modes um here's one case which is interesting where they should they actually have a hybrid, um, a coaxial pin uh, mounted on a printed circuit board. Um, okay, this one in here we will cover when we go to OMTs. This is basically uh, picking up the signal from two sides of a circular waveguide. And this piece that you see in the middle with a stiff uh, metal feeding into the circular waveguide, we will cover that in the... Um, uh, OMT uh, videos, same way that is done in this case. And these are available on the net, by the way. Um, so again, basically what we're doing, we're uh, inserting a probe a spaced at a quarter wavelength from the um, uh, back short or multiples of that. And that's what we end up with is we transform a TE-10 mode to a quasi-TEM Macro strip line mode. There are a whole bunch of other varieties of waveguide transitions that I will be covering, but um, in the next videos, um, in some cases we have the transition can be done to a suspended uh, macro uh, strip line, which uh, has some other benefits. But so in any case, again, the design is done as follows: we have a waveguide that you know the dimensions of for the appropriate frequency that you're operating at. You locate a quarter wavelength uh, distance from the back, shorted back, and you place a probe. The probe, you place a little inductive piece to cancel the capacitance, the stiff capacitance in here. So you parameterize this on the HFSS so that to make sure that you, if you don't want to analytically de design it. Um, and then, of course, you have a 50 ohm line and in here, we added a quarter wavelength because what happens is we want to match the 50 ohm line. When you cancel the capacitance, looking into the probe, the equivalent impedance of the probe with the capacitance, when you cancel it at this at the edge of the waveguide on the inside, you basically add a little inductive piece to cancel it. And then so you end up with a with a real impedance, but that real impedance is not 50 ohm in most cases. Um, so what you want to do is you add another quarter wavelength line on the strip line to um, match it to 50 ohm. So you can uh, verify all of your calculations based on the classical um, waveguides um, theory, um, the cutoff frequency in here, and in here what happens to the uh, T1 mode, um, the impedance of the um, waveguide itself, the wavelength of the waveguide, and so you end up with this. So again, what we did is we took a, um, a design, which is this one, uh, a single probe, okay? And then what we did is we duplicated that. Uh, sorry, we duplicated that in here. We duplicated that, and let me just hide the E field. We 
we duplicate that. Um, Okay. Oh, so I'm looking at the wrong one. Let's go here. Okay, so we duplicated that in here. Let me just hide the... Uh, okay, so we duplicated that design in here. And we verified it, okay? And then what we did is next is we put back-to-back -back two of them to uh, verify that it does operate, and now we are ready to build a, uh, an, um, a spatially combined amplifier, okay? And so there are some commercial products that are based on this um, approach. There are benefits to this, doing this, um, as opposed to doing it with just a regular, uh, the whole thing in a planar. Um, those I'm not gonna go into at this point, but you can refer to them. I thank you very much and um, on the next videos, I will be covering uh, several other classes of waveguide to uh, a strip line transitions. We will be covering OMTs, radial combiners, which is a concept that a lot of people have uh, showed interest in. I have uh, at least three, uh, two videos on that. Um, and then we'll cover um, a, multi, uh, a whole class of Amplifiers. Everything is going to be done in ANSYS, um, so you can contact me regarding these designs. Thank you for listening. Appreciate it. Thank you.